dedicated to increasing your brand exposure. Monique Lewis Management enhances and increases visibility and exposure for socially responsible brands via press mentions, social media marketing, celebrity collaborations, partnerships, and strategic campaigns. Monique Lewis Management's publicity and marketing campaigns have raised over $10 million in investments, sponsorships, and grant funding for clients. For more information, contact Monique Lewis Management at globalprsolutions.net or call 646-470-4806 and increase your brand today. Welcome to this episode of the Outfront Podcast with host Vince Noble, the podcast that gives emerging leaders and career transitioning individuals the information and inspiration to thrive and become their best. For sponsorship and advertisement opportunities, please contact info at nobleresolutions.com. And now, your host, Vince Noble. I want to acknowledge each and every one of you who is stepping into your authentic power today. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Outfront Podcast. I am your host, Vance Noble. Hey, as always, before we get started with these extraordinary conversations, I want to say as much as I love how intellectually stimulating they are, they are meant to do far more than peak our intellect. They are meant to inspire us and drive us into meaningful action. I am so excited today. We have the distinct pleasure of having with us Love Lace Lee, a television and movie producer who has spent more than 30 years in Hollywood. We'll talk about several of his latest projects to include his passion to teach others the mechanics of writing their very own screenplay. We have a lot to unpack in this episode, so let's go. Shouts out to Vince Noble. What up? That's the big homie. Help me stack when my pockets was flat. Now I got a grip on me. Information, motivation, inspiration, inspiration. Make sure that you avoid elimination, elimination, renovation of your finances. I done had more than five chances. Vince got more than five answers. A celebration. Let's hire your dancers. Yeah. On this good game, you bet not bypass. Out front, out front. Yep, that's the podcast. Love Lays, welcome to the show today. Vince, thank you for having me. I'm honored to be here. Hey, yeah, it's certainly a pleasure. So for those who may not know you or all that you do, tell us a little bit about yourself and, and sort of what has brought you to the work you so passionately do today. Vince, I'm a Chicagoan who returned to Hollywood in 1984 with one goal in mind. I was single-minded. I was going to make movies. Now you have to understand 1984 was a long time ago. Right. <laughs> Wasn't a lot of people that looked like us making films successfully. Mm -hmm. I had no idea of what I was doing or how I was going to do it. But I want you and your listeners to understand that that should never keep you from having a goal. Right. You don't have to know how to do it. All mm -hmm. you have to know is that you're going to do it. Right. Right. That's wonderful. That's wonderful. So, hey, since since the pandemic, um, what, what do you find most challenging and how are you dealing with it in terms of, you know, sort of developing uh, uh, new projects or ideas or, you know, whether the marketing and the whole marketing promotion process, how are you dealing with all of that? Well, the pandemic, of course, has presented new challenges for us, um, requiring that a lot of things become remote. Mm -hmm. But what it did for me is allow me to focus on what I do every day, Vince. I write every mm -hmm. day. Mm -hmm. I teach my students to write every day. So I overcome the obstacles by writing and reaching out to people and asking them, if they want to be involved with me, or as I used to say in Hollywood, do you want to play with me? Right. <laughs> not, right, right. Not everybody wants to entertain a new associate or a new partner if you're not 
famous mm-hmm. if you're mm-hmm. not established. Yes, I spent 32 years in Hollywood and my claim to fame is I walked away with my sanity and a fistful of knowledge that I'm more than happy to pass on to others. Yeah, that's that's certainly wonderful. That's certainly wonderful. So, love, ladies, you know, you mentioned early on, like some of the difficulties um, early on uh, in your transition to Hollywood uh, as a producer. Um, and so, you know, uh, even now today, um, can you speak a little bit about, you know, some of the things that you find that was most difficult in bringing a project to uh, to the big screen, if you will? I worked in advertising first, so that gave me an opportunity to know production. Mm-hmm. Um, the major, the major hurdle for any production is financing. Mm-hmm. Um, the hardest thing there is in Hollywood, however, is to get a screenplay read. There right. is no shortage of screenplays. Mm-hmm. I actually worked at MGM for just slight of two years and a gentleman took me into a room and said, hold your breath. And I said, what? And he turned on the light, Vince, and Mm -hmm. we were in a room that was probably 12 by 20 with a ceiling that was probably 10 feet high and it was packed from floor to ceiling with screenplays. Mm -hmm. And... Mm -hmm. I want you to know it was the most discouraging thing that I had ever seen. Right, in my right, life. right. And I said, oh my gosh. He said, yes, these were all purchased and passed. And so he said to me, what makes you think that you can come to this town and make movies? Mm-hmm. And I looked at the pile and I looked at him, Vince, and I said, because I say so. Mm. That's, that's, yeah, that's powerful right there. There's always going to be obstacles. Right. Always. When, right. When Jesse Owens went to the Olympics and he was in front of Hitler and people were telling him what he was, what he couldn't do, all he was listening to in his head was what he could do. Mm-hmm. Now, you better understand that making a film or any aspect of entertainment is difficult. Mm -hmm. There's lots of competition. There's lots of roadblocks. There are people that will mislead you. Uh, There are people that will take advantage of you. They'll wear you out, they'll use you up. Mm -hmm. However, if you can navigate through all of that nonsense, you can emerge as someone that's working in the business like everybody else has taken some lumps mm-hmm. and a professional. Right. You know, nobody, I mean, I've seen people grandfathered into this business because their mother or father mm-hmm. was there and made a way for them. And some of them weren't even successful. Right. Um, It takes a lot to make it in this industry. It is not easy. It will never be easy. So for listeners that are looking for something easy, this is not it. Right, right. However, however, I will tell anybody and everybody, I know that everybody has a story to tell. And if you can learn how to tell your story through a screenplay, then you're right there with everybody else and you can present what you have. Mm -hmm. And I teach people that. I teach people how to write their first 90 page screenplay events. Mm -hmm. And, you know, my students will say, Lovelace, why does it have to be 90 pages? There's a very simple answer for that. If you're not a produced screenwriter, and you hand a director, a producer, an actor, or anybody a screenplay that's 90 pages, they're not going to read it. Mm -hmm. You're not respecting their time. The first thing a producer does is look at the page count. The page count tells him or her whether or not you know what you're doing. Mm -hmm. If it's 92 pages, I might actually have somebody read this. Mm. I learned that from a man who learned it the hard way. 
He was determined to tell his story, and it was 152 pages, and I read the screenplay. It was brilliant. Mm -hmm. I read his screenplay and said to myself, well, maybe I can become a plumber. <laughs> but guess what? It was too long, and nobody read it. Right. Right, right. That's that's powerful in that um, you speak about, you know, everyone having a story. Um, and one of the things I often say is, you know, your story is your story, uh, but you have to be willing to tell your story um, because you never know how the world is going to respond to your story. Uh, but you have to tell your story. Absolutely. Um, yeah. So, so having dealing with all of the psychology of um, the industry within itself, um, sort of what was that defining moment for you when you realized, you know, I'm willing to do this and I could do this, you know, sort of for a living? I tell you, I had to have a complete breakdown. In one year, in one December, probably December of 93, I had a screenplay circulating and two producers called me in the same week about the same screenplay. And mm -hmm. one guy said, Lovelace, I just love this. And I'm, I'm waiting for him to say, I want to option this. I want to buy this. And I was about to jump out of my seat. Mm -hmm. And the next words out of his mouth were, but we just did something similar. So I'm going to have to pass. Mm -hmm. But I will keep you in mind. So I felt good for about 20 minutes. I got the next call and this producer was nasty and the same screenplay. And he said, I don't even know why I read this mm -hmm. and it, uh, you're, you're not ready. And I was talking to him and he hung up in my face. Oh, wow. So I decided to quit. I got a big plastic trash can. I put, everything that had to do with screenwriting, the software, all of my books and everything in a big trash can. My best friend, James Moran came, helped me with the trash can. I lived on the second floor. He took it away in his truck. And I said, I can make money in marketing. I don't mm -hmm. have to beg anybody to read my screenplays. I'll go back to marketing. And that's what I did. Mm -hmm. And three months later, James Moran called me and said, I'm on the way. I have something for you. I said, okay. And so I walked downstairs. He drives up with this truck and the trash can in the back. <laughs> and I said, man, that looks familiar. He says, help me upstairs with this. And I'm like, what are we doing? And he gets up to my office and we start putting all this stuff back. I said, James, I quit. He said, no, you didn't. You can't quit. Hollywood needs you. They don't know it, but they need you. Right. Now, this is 1993. I mm. hadn't accomplished anything, but I had <laughs> I had somebody in my corner who was reading everything that I wrote. Mm -hmm. And he said, Lovelace, if you quit, you don't inspire my daughters. Right. We don't inspire anybody. People that quit don't have a story to tell because they quit. Mm -hmm. Nobody gathers around the guy that quit. Right. And I mean, I wanted to fight with him, and but he was right. Mm -hmm. And he said, now sit your butt down, put that <laughs> software back in that computer, and start writing those great ideas. Right. Right. I did, and I haven't stopped since. Right. I was so, blessed to have James Moran in my life for 20 years, Vince. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, it's always take, uh, you know, someone at times to push us uh, in ways that we don't want to, but turn out to be the best thing for us. Well, the way we say it is God always has a ram in the bush. Mm -hmm. That's okay. right. And James Moran died in 2015 of cancer, which mm -hmm. was a big surprise to all of us that knew him. And I was crying with a friend one day and I told her my best friend just died. And she put her arm around me and Kathy Nunley said he had taught you everything that he had, Lovelace. He mm -hmm. gave you what you needed. Now you continue. Right. 
right? It's always interesting to know sort of creative processes. What is your creative process like? I mean, what what time or space do you have, you know, to sort of be in that space or place when you're when you're at your best? Um, anytime I open my computer, mm-hmm. my personal mandate. Vince is you write every day Mm -hmm. at any given time. I have four uncompleted screenplays and I bounce around between screenplays. My process is when I get an idea, I attach a title to it. Mm -hmm. And once I have a title, then I flesh it out. I know who the protagonist is. I know who the companion is. I know who the antagonist is. Mm -hmm. And I start fleshing that out. I usually write the end last Mm -hmm. and then work my way backwards. I wanted to be the kind of writer that doesn't get pigeonholed because I saw what happened when people do that. So I write everything except horror. Mm -hmm. So, so if you could change anything about the industry, what would that be? Hmm. Well, that change is actually happening now. Um, accessibility. Mm-hmm. Um, it was the good old boys club for a very long time, for decades and decades and decades. And now it's slowly changing. Mm-hmm. There was a time when Hollywood would tell black producers, look, Black movies don't sell well overseas. So we can't really give you the same budget that we give Charlie Blue Eyes. Mm -hmm. But we know that that's nonsense. Right. I went to see Straight Out of Compton with my friend Rhonda Dunwood. We're both directors, producers. Vince, we walked into a theater. And the first thing we saw were the first eight rows of Caucasians sitting there to see straight out of Compton. Mm -hmm. People had brought their whole families. I saw grandparents and little children as young as five and my mouth fell open. Mm -hmm. And I understood that our stories are just as viable as anybody else's. Right. Right. So so what piece of advice would you give someone who says to your point, what you said, you know, in, in the past uh, was not, you know, well received or what have you. What, what piece of advice would you give, you know, to someone who wants to break into the industry today? My piece of advice is be well armed. Mm-hmm. I'm a former soldier. A soldier would never go into battle without proper armament. Mm-hmm. Um, let's say as a screenwriter, learn the craft. Right, right. Read the books. Read screenplays. Watch s- successful films over and over and over again. Mm-hmm. And once you get a handle on this is what a screenplay paradigm is, start doing some bad writing. Right. Because guess what? In the beginning, that's all it is. It's bad writing. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't matter. Because, Vince, the art of writing is not writing at all. The art of writing is rewriting. Mm -hmm. So you get that bad writing down, and then you go back and you rewrite Mm -hmm. until it's polished, until it's right. 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 You don't get tired. You don't get discouraged. You don't get angry because none of that gets you paid. None of that gets you recognized. Um, And you have to be, you must be, you will be persistent Mm -hmm. or you will be irrelevant. Right. I have a relationship now with a producing partner by the name of Derek Vitato. I thank God daily for Mr. Vitato. He is interested in my work because of the many different types of pieces that I can present him for film and TV. Mm -hmm. See, I don't just uh, talk the talk, Vince. I write every day. I walk the walk. Mm -hmm. And I have the body of work to show for it. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, yeah, that's uh, wonderful. You have to put the time in. Absolutely, absolutely. So, so how do you feel the internet and social media, and more specifically, you know, like streaming platforms, uh, have impacted the film industry? Oh my gosh, we have seen streaming platforms. Uh, let me put it this way: prior to the pandemic. I was having conversations with different people that I knew across the country. They mm -hmm. had never streamed a movie. Mm -hmm. The pandemic comes along and we're on lockdown. Mm -hmm. And that's the only entertainment there is. Right, right. And we have seen streaming platforms come into existence and thrive since the pandemic. Mm -hmm. And I am thankful that I still believe I can get a deal with one of mm -hmm. those streaming platforms. Right. Because they need content. Right. Right. Absolutely. So, hey, let's let's talk about, uh, you know, one of your latest projects currently being, you know, pitched around Hollywood. Um, and you talked a little bit about it previously is he's faking it. So, so tell us a little bit about the film and, and what was your inspiration for writing it? Well, he's faking it. Vince is a TV show. Mm -hmm. OK. And in 2016, I met a young man whose parents uh, were from Africa. Mm -hmm. But he was raised in Washington, D.C., a very talented young man named Tunji Akindero. Uh -huh. We had a conversation that lasted an entire afternoon. He was at the complex in which I lived. And we talked for hours and hours and hours. And Tunji told me what it was like growing up being the son of Africans. These are people that came to the United States because of the educational opportunities that this country would afford their children. Right. And he had me rolling on the floor. He was like, you know how you always <laughs> see Africans in videos dancing and having a good time? I said, yeah. Right. He said, not in my house, brother. My mother said, you have a good time in that bedroom and you read that book. Right, right. You want to go out and play? You play with that book. And he <laughs> had me dying. Right. And, and so we talked, and my interaction with him, Vince, it changed my life because now I get to see what the son of immigrants see about and think about America. Right. And then... Some weeks later, maybe a month later, I was reading an article that said hiring managers who are hard pressed to hire people of color have decided that hiring black Africans was the mm -hmm. way to go. All right. And I said, really? And then I kept reading because black Africans are hardworking mm -hmm. and they don't offer, you know, any kickback, pushback in the marketplace. They just come in, they put their head down, and they work. Mm -hmm. And they do what they're told and they work. And that's different than the homegrown black person that understands, well, look, I have rights. Right. And if you're working me more than eight hours, I'm supposed to get overtime and blah, 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 blah. Mm -hmm. So it dawned on me, wait a minute, this is the dynamic that I could exaggerate and create a show around mm -hmm. and it just happened to be a tv show right and of course since it's out there now i can talk about it right he's making it is a show about a young black college graduate who's very popular at school graduates near the top of his class i mean it's a big drop mm -hmm. the reality hits that I've got this, I've got this degree, I'm Mr. Popular on campus, but in the real world, nobody wants me. Mm -hmm. So what he discovers is that Africans are in vogue. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so he goes home to the brownstone where he lives with his aunt and the tenants, and he says, help me become an African. And they're like, what? He says, no, I'm going to get a job. And so his aunt says to him, look, you shouldn't have to change yourself to get a job. 
Right. You should be able to be who you are. And you know what he reminded his aunt Vince? Mm -hmm. You know what? If I remember correctly, auntie, you straightened your hair. Right. So that your coworkers wouldn't stop you all day and say, oh, can I touch your hair? Mm -hmm. Now, when your hair looked like theirs, they left you alone. And in a sense, you changed yourself to keep your job. She agrees. The whole team of them worked together to create an African persona. Mm -hmm. He changes his name on his resume, resubmits it in the internet, and bamo whammo, he gets <laughs> so many job offers, and he takes one. So now he's got to be this other persona. And of course, it's a comedy because it spins out of control. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I would say I would say uh, there's absolutely some truth to that, uh, but it sounds like it's going to be uh, really hilarious there. Well, what I did, Vince, I actually write so much that I forgot about that pilot. Mm -hmm. And one day I thought about Tanji. And in fact, I saw him on social media. And I went and I looked up and I said, oh, my gosh, I forgot about he's faking it. Mm -hmm. And I reached out to him and I said, look, I wrote this and I think you should be able to carry it. Mm -hmm. And I sent him the pilot and gave him written permission to pitch it around town. Right. With the people that he knows. Mm -hmm. And so in doing that, Vince. I saw myself breathing, breathing life into he's faking it and mm -hmm. arming Tunji with something new to talk to his associates about. Right, right. So right what we wonderful. have to realize, Vince, is that there are very few things that matter that we do by ourselves. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, hey, listen, what, what, what can we expect from Lovelace uh, in the new year to come? Well, I appreciate you asking me that. In 2022, Derek Vitato and I will be producing the comedy Boxing with Miss Mary. Mm -hmm. Boxing with Miss Mary is the story of me returning to Chicago after 32 years in Hollywood to mm -hmm. take care of my elderly dying mother. Mm -hmm. And brother, when I tell you that my mother gave me hell for three years, mm -hmm. I'm not lying. Mm -hmm. So to maintain my sanity, I started writing it as a stage play. And then I converted it to a screenplay. It was presented to Mr. Vitato and his then partner. And they offered me a deal to direct. Oh, wow. That's wonderful. Yeah, it is. I'm I'm thrilled. That's wonderful. So, hey, listen, Lovelace, um, b before we go, um, um, tell us, um, you know, how can people connect with some of the things you're doing, either online or through social media? Well, Boxing with Miss Mary has a Facebook page. Um, Boxing with Miss Mary, the movie on Facebook. And I have a Facebook page. Mm -hmm. I also teach the beginning screenwriting with Lovelace Lee the Third workshop. Mm -hmm. And I'm happy to talk to any groups anywhere in the country that want to learn how to write their first screenplay. I'll go anywhere to teach this. As a matter of fact, Vince, I'm in conversations right now with the Illinois Department of Corrections mm -hmm. to take my workshop to uh, men that are in custody now. That's wonderful. That's wonderful. So, hey, listen, uh, Lovelace, thank you once again, sir, for joining us today. And it has certainly been a pleasure. And uh, hey, please come back and check on us soon. Thank you for having me. It was a wonderful experience, Vince. Thank you. Talk soon. Be well. We certainly hope that you enjoyed today's episode. So make sure to join our Facebook group, Out Front with Vince Noble. And don't forget to comment, rate, share, and subscribe on the Apple Podcast or wherever you listen to download your podcast. 
Until next time, remember, you still get to write your own life story.